This is my ultimate all singing, all dancing solution to my water issues. I've got uh, variable water circulation to cool the base. I've got a cooling loop that's completely independent and can run whenever it's needed. I've got uh, hot water coming in on demand to top up the system. I can take water out of the system. It's everything I wanted. But this is the story of how it evolved. Welcome back, guys, to another brain melting, oxygen not included. Right. So in the last episode, I was struggling with coming up with a, a, a cooling system that would do everything that I wanted it to do, uh, that would give me a variable flow water cooling of my base, that would allow me to have uh, nicely balanced water temperature, or, or nicely controllable water temperature, uh, so that I could have it consistent within a couple of degrees, uh, and also allow me to feed uh, fresh hot water from geysers into the system uh, so that I could have like I could just cool that water down as and, and have as much water as I wanted and trying to build all of that into one system was was blowing my mind so th thanks to the people on my discord channel my patreon supporters and my uh, my channel members uh, we we discussed this and I eventually like gelled in my mind like half of the solution and this, this is the first time. So let me explain how this works, right? And then I've, I've just figured out how I can build in the second half of the, of the problem. But let's deal with the first half first. So what we've got here is, um, is two loops. Let, let me pause this and, and try and explain to you how this is working. So we have two liquid reservoirs at there, and they are acting as one. Okay, so everything that goes into one goes into both equally and everything that comes out comes out of both equally so we've got this pipe again I know this looks a little bit complicated but we've got um, this is the this is the water coming into the reservoirs and it's just split here so one packet goes this way one packet goes this way so we've got and that goes into this liquid reservoir and this goes into this liquid reservoir you can kind of ignore everything else for now and then coming out we take water out of this reservoir take water out of this reservoir i run it through two valves these are set to 500 grams each now this is actually very important we run we, we limit the, the water flow out to 500 grams each so that we've got a maximum 10 kilograms and then and that averages the water temperature coming out of these two because they can be like 0.1 of a degree difference um, they're both exactly the same at the moment and most of the time they will be exactly the same but you could have like a 0.1 degree difference and that would actually give you a problem over here this is our thermostat this is like our base thermostat this is going to control the temperature of the whole base one one little thermo sensor it's, i I've got to say i love this solution it's very elegant uh, so we we average the, wa the, the water coming out of here so that we've got an average temperature right and at the moment you can see the water coming out is at 19.9 degrees now I've, I've, I've paused it at this point because this is set to activate uh, if the temperature gets above 20 so let's speed things up and get ready to uh, to show you what happens when that thermostat hits 20 degrees now uh, the automation now prepare yourself because the automation I think I've gone a bit overboard it's a little bit complex compared to some of my other solutions we've got a whole one liquid shut off and, and that is it that's oh, that's what runs this this is so freaking simple it's beautiful um, so let me show you when this hits uh, when this hits 20 degrees right this liquid shut off is uh, is turned on now in the same way that we've got the water uh what's the best way to look at this in the same way that we've got the water coming in here uh and going equally into these two we've also got a second loop which goes through this aqua tuna okay and when when this liquid shut off is activated we take water equally from this reservoir and this reservoir and we take it through the cooling system 
it gets called, and then it comes back, and it goes back into split equally this reservoir and this reservoir. Okay, so we're always taking equally from both and putting equally back into both. Okay, and because we're doing that, these liquid reservoirs um, average the temperature of the water. So as soon as we put water in there, all the water in there averages to a single temperature. So this is at 19.9. See, we've got a 0.1 difference. This has just gone up to 20 degrees. But the water coming out is still at 19.9 because we're averaging it. Now this is going to hit 20 degrees. Now at 20 degrees, nothing happens because this is set to above 20 degrees. Now at some point, this will go above 20. It won't quite, quite hit 20.1, but it'll be above 20. And then this will activate. Ah, uh, there we go. This has gone green. This shut off activates. And we start pulling water out of here. Now, this is not... No, the, the important thing to note is this is not impacting this loop. This loop just circulates 10 kilogram packets of water all the time. And it's not affected by this cooling loop. This cooling loop is taking water out separately. This is why we need two reservoirs. Because we need to be able to either put in or take out more than 10 kilograms of water. We've got 10 kilograms going around this loop. We need to be able to deal with this separately. So, um, the, the reason that we need this temperature averaged is if we were taking packets out of here, alternate packets out of these two, this would start alternating between above 20 and below 20, right? And that would mean that we would be getting like every other packet coming through here instead of a constant flow. The reason why that's important is this has to run like constantly. If you, if you send every other packet, then the aqua tuner will actually, even though it's, it's getting every other packet, it'll take two seconds to process each packet instead of a second. You, actually, you can see this. When the first packet gets here, it'll take two seconds to process that. Every other packet behind it will be processed in one second. Watch this. So, first packet hits, and see, see the pause? So what happens if, if you send like every other packet, right, then this thing will be consuming uh, 1200 watts all the time, even though you're only processing half as much water. So for efficiency, you need to be sending, like when you're sending, you need to have a, a, a full set of packets. Um, now, I could have put a packet stacker in there, but like, why, why bother? It, it works perfectly well as it is, and it's so simple. So this, um, this runs around. Now, the water that, uh, that's coming through here is still at the same temperature, still at 20 degrees. Okay, and we're still circulating the, the full amount of water. This comes around, this goes through the, um, uh, it, it goes around and it cools down. We're using this water to cool down the, um, uh, the steam turbine. This goes into the aqua tuner, and this is going in at, what, 21.3 at the moment. And then it comes out, cooled down at 7.4, right? And then that's gonna go around. And then it's gonna be split into this tank and this tank. Half goes one way, half goes the other way. Into the reservoir it goes. Now, that's gonna to start to cool down the average temperature in here. And you can see this is already down to 19.6, 19.6. Right, now, because I've got a fairly long loop on this, so I'm, I've, I've deliberately, root, I could have rooted it this way, a shorter way, but I've deliberately taken it round so that to create kind of a, a buffer so that this will cool the liquid down by about two degrees in the reservoir. So once we hit 20 degrees, we say, right, we're gonna cool, cool this down a couple of degrees. So uh, let's, um, I guess, watch this. So this is, a, this is now 19.5, this is now 19.5. The, the water coming out here is at like 19.7. So this has now shut off this, this thermosensor. So we're no longer sending water into the cooling, cooling loop. Okay, so that carries on. We carry on cooling down the water in the liquid reservoirs because we've got the, the remaining water flowing through here. This will get down to, come here. Ah, this will get down to, well, what are we at, at the moment? 18.6, 18.5. Yeah, 
So it gets down to about 18.5, so one and a half degrees. And then that's where it'll stay. This water's going around. I've put some uh, radiant uh, pipes in here just to try and pick up more heat so that I can demonstrate this more quickly. Um, so the water's, uh, the water's coming out of here at 18.7. It's going back into the system at 21 degrees. Slowly, that's going to heat up the reservoirs again. And when that hits 20 degrees, we'll have another little cooling. Right, so we've managed to establish a nice, consistent... Uh, I mean, if you think of it like an AC system, that's basically what it is, or a, or a, a central heating system in reverse. So you've just got to think a single thermostat. You set the temperature, and the temperature is going to stay within a couple of degrees of that all the time. So... That solves my issue as far as cooling the base. Okay, now here's, here's the second part of the problem. So the second part of the problem is, not only do I want to use this water to cool the base, but I also want to use it to supply any systems that actually need water. So for example, I want to supply my plants with water. Okay, and if we look at it like right now, I've got my, I've got my cooling, my circulation, cooling circulation, going through those and they'll take a little bit of water now and again when they need it okay great and then we also want to feed our bathroom systems so that when they need a little bit of water they can take a little bit of water uh, and and to be honest for anything else that we want to use water for i want to be able to just drain it from this system the problem the problem is if you take any water out of this system how do you how do you know not 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 how do you put it in putting water into the system is actually pretty easy but how do you know that you need to put more water in and how much because there's no automation on these uh, liquid reservoirs so there's no way of knowing how full they are and this was driving me crazy this was driving me completely crazy but I figured it out and eventually and you know what I I, I, I thought of this idea and I dismissed it but this does seem to be the way to solve it so let's say we've got our our two our two water reservoirs if we put in another two okay and then we put in a bit of plumbing to connect them together obviously we wouldn't we'd want to use uh, insulated so we connect them together so now those four are acting as one reservoir what we do is we put in uh, a liquid pipe element sensor and because I want both of them uh, to act together, or, or all of them to act together, I've got to put in two of those, and then we'll put in over to the side. What do I want? I want automation. We're going to put in an OR gate. Whoa! I haven't used an OR gate before. There we go. This is see, this is complicated. Oh my lord! Okay, so we're going to put in an OR gate, and then we'll say. Uh, sorry, link that one into there, link this one into there, right? So now we can say, if there's any water in this pipe, then we know that this these re that these reservoirs are full, okay? But we've got a nice buffer here. So if we're feeding water into the system, we can we can just have water constantly coming in here, right? With a shutoff valve linked to this all gate, so that. If, if we get to the point where there's water here, we shut off the water coming in. And then we know that this is always flowing because we've always got water going out. We've always got water coming back in. So we're still going to be, um, be able to uh, run our cooling loop exactly the same. So that's it. That is the solution. Now, what that means is I'm going to be able to hook up um, my circulation system to the plants and to the toilets and the showers and whatever and take water out of the system and then hook up my hot water geysers to bring in hot water to replace that. And then if I'm bringing in hot water, which heats this up, the cooling loop, which we've already established, will recognize that the water's warm and immediately start cooling the water. Oh my God, all the pieces of the jigsaw have fallen into place. So all I've got to do now it's actually built the darn thing. So what I'm going to do, let's get rid of that. I'm going to come over here. Uh, I'm going to shut off that and that. 
just to drain this a little bit. Now, I have, I have kind of wondered. I'd kind of like to have this, the, the other two reservoirs, on top of here. But because this reservoir's in the way, that's a little bit problematic. So I think I'm going to have to put the other two reservoirs down here. Yeah. That's what I'm going to... You know what? I've shut those off. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to take my pliers and actually disconnect that and that. That's what I wanted to do. There we go. And then I actually wanted these back on. So let's set you to 5,000. Set you to 5,000. Boom. Just so that we can drain this so that I can replace these. Okay. All that water's out of there. Good news. All right, let's pause this. Okay, so now we need to do some ripping out. So let's rip that stuff out and let's rip that out a little bit. And I'm also going to want to rip out um, those. And that should be it. So come on, guys, rip this stuff out for me. Let's make this priority eight. Rip all of that out, boys. Here they come. Boom, 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 boom. Honkle Griff is so fast. Mind you, they're all pretty fast now. Okay, now that we've uh, got rid of all of that stuff, we could design the new one. Now, the, the liquid pipe thermosensor is going to move. So I guess we should deconstruct that as well before we start. Cool. So, how is this going to work? We're going to have a couple of liquid reservoirs going in. There and there. And then plumbing-wise, insulated pipes. So we're going to be taking the water uh, out of this guy and sending it into this guy. Out of this guy, sending it into this guy. Now, down here, I'm going to... Before I have my valves pointed downwards, I'm going to have my valves over here. So if I take that out like that and take that out like that, and then I can have my valves pointing over here, there, and there. And then all we need to do is merge that together. So, liquid pipe. And we can just bring that down like that. All right, cool. All right, so then we want our thermosensors, don't we? Yes, we do. So let's get, not thermosensors, element sensors. So we want element sensor there, element sensor there. And we want our thermo sensor moved out now. Um, you know what? I need to run that pipe out one because it needs to go through that thermo sensor. So let's run that liquid pipe like that. Okay, so my thermo sensor is over there now. So my wire is going to be a little bit longer, but hey, it is what it is. So automation wire. Um, I guess. Try and be tidy. Let's run it around like that, which means when I rip that out. Okay, so now, where the hell am I going to put my OR gate? That's my question. So, I'm thinking OR gate, maybe there. Yeah, let's put that in there. So, uh, we want automation wire. So, that's going to go into there. That's going to go into there. All right, cool. So, having got that, all sorted out. Now we need to put in um, a way for water to get into the system, the hot water. Now let's see. I have got I've got hot, hot water that I could pump down here and bring into here, haven't I? Yeah. Okay. So what do I want to do? I want to disconnect that, and then this is not con this is not connected to anything at the moment. Cool. So. I can get rid of that. Uh, that's going. That's going into there. I want to keep that, but we can disconnect that because we're not bringing water in from this reservoir anymore. Okay, so I think what we can do is just deconstruct that bridge because we want it going the other way, don't we? So yeah, deconstruct that bridge, priority nine. They can start getting on with uh, with building all of this nonsense. Oh, I'm so nervous as to see whether this is going to actually work. It works in my head, 
We'll see if it actually works in practice. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Alright, so um, we've got rid of that. So what I want to do is um, sever this, don't I? Yeah, so let's sever that. And then we need this all to be insulated, don't we? Yeah, we do. So that needs to be insulated. And then... Oh! Okay. That's a problem. I'm going to have to bridge over there, aren't I? To get this in. I can come up with a more more elegant pipe routing after I've kind of figured it out. So if we put a liquid bridge over there and I don't need to bridge any of that. I just need to get this changed to insulated pipe. Route it into there. Bring it all down here. Now the question is where do I route it into the system? And I want it as I would really I want it as close to this as possible. As, as close to the reservoir. Introduce it as close to the reservoirs. But it's going to be introduced in the cooling system. Okay, so if I was to bring it say across there for now, then bring it down there. And put in my liquid shutoff to control that flow. Um, I want it going into there, don't I? So, we rotate it like that. Then run that into there. Pause, because I need my automation done. So, if we just run an automation wire up there and into there. Now, hang on a second. I'm saying... Uh, this is going to be set to water. This is going to be set to water. So I'm saying uh, send a green signal if there's water in here or here. Hmm. Now, hang on a second. Um, can I switch that just by saying not... Like, if I say non... Will it send a green signal if there's nothing in there? Now, I think it has to detect something. Because it's not sending green signals, is it? No, it says no filter selected. So I, 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 I'm going to have to use um, an XOR gate there rather than OR gate. Let's go. Uh, so water in that one. And water in that one. So if there's water in there or there's water in there, then we want this to stop. Now I could do it with a a knock gate, but I think probably better to go with um, an XOR gate. No, uh, not an XOR gate. No, I no, I'm going to have to use a knock gate because I haven't got a nor gate. Not this and not this. So I'm going to have to use a knock gate. Oh man, God, this is crazy complicated. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll put that there. We'll cancel that. I mean, let's face it, it's not, it's not that much of a complication, but it means we have a, another step. So that goes into there, and then that's going to go up there. Okay, so, so if there's no water in there, and if there's no water in there, then allow w fresh water to flow in, because it means that we're less than half full. Good. Okay, go. Oh, it's detecting water. Okay, so that's working. So what I want to do now is I want all the water in the bottom reservoirs. Because at the moment, we've got like half the water's in the top, half the water's in the bottom, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do is um, turn these off for now. So turn you off. Let's make that priority nine. And turn you off, priority nine. Go.
All right, so um, are we ready to start running some water around this? I think we are. So let's run 5,000 from there and 5,000 from there. There we go. Let's, let's see what happens when we start running some... Oh, now it's registering correctly. Okay, good. All right, so our water is now circulating nicely through our system. Just as it was before. So that's going to go all the way around and feed in just as it was before. Here it comes. Come on, complete the loop. Now, once it's completed the loop, then we can actually turn on letting this hot water in. So, let's, let, you know what, let's do that now. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see. I've already thought that there might be a problem. We connect those together. Water starts to flow. Now, this is hot water coming in at like 95 degrees. Near enough. Now, initially, because we're gonna be bringing so much water in of this hot water, it'll probably overwhelm our cooling system a little bit, but it won't take long for that to calm down with a bit of look. Ha, ah, okay, right, I've already detected an issue with this because we've got this water flowing through and it's flowing through on alternate ticks. Oh, man. Yeah. That is not going to work because we've got a constant flow. Okay, how the hell do I get around that? Okay, I think the solution might be to simplify this and not use reservoir not use an extra pair of reservoirs if i get rid of those two reservoirs i've let all the water flow into here these are almost full now if we get rid of that one and get rid of that one let's make those priority you know get those ripped out of the way i've already removed the pipes that were flowing into there okay instead of using uh, reservoirs to register the overflow I think what we can do, oh, this is going to be a little bit tricky, is, uh, is have overflow pipes coming from these two points. Basically, um, the water going in here will always go into the, into the reservoir. If I have a pipe coming out of here, the only time water will go into that pipe coming out of there is if the <laughs> is if the water is if the reservoir is full okay so uh i can get rid of those three bits of pipe so the, the problem is the the piping starts to become a bit of a nightmare um yeah this is this is gonna be a bit tricky uh, i think i'm gonna have to root that a different what well, mind you that's no oh, that's gonna be Oh, I th if I root it around the bottom, I think I can do it. God, this is... God, this is a bit tricky. Let's let them remove that stuff. So, Because wh what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a liquid bridge and another liquid bridge to bring this water out and bring it round into here. Because I've got to have pipes coming down here, bringing that water. Well, actually, now if I root it down... Ah, no, yeah, I know how to do this. Ha <laughs> ha, it's just suddenly clicked, I think. All right, so... What we do is we have uh, an overflow pipe, which comes out and goes around here. Now, I'm going to have to put in a liquid bridge so that the water knows which way to go. So that's going to go there, and that's going to go up there. And then from here, that's going to go into there. That's fine. And then I just want my normal flow out of here. You know what? I can move all of this up back up to there now. All right. 
But for now, for the purposes of this, um, that's just going to flow into there. And that is going to flow into there. So let's cancel getting rid of that. And then hook it up. Let's let them get building this. Okay. I actually think that might work. <laughs> we'll see. I am wondering whether this liquid bridge, the priority on that, might screw things up. But we'll see. We'll see. Seriously, keep your fingers crossed. I've done this all with um, regular pipes, haven't I? It should have all been with, um, with insulated pipes. Well, actually, I mean, this water coming out doesn't really matter. It's actually fine. But all of this really should have been done with uh, with insulated pipes. Come on, guys, get this get this stuff finished. So I threaten see that I threaten them with prioritising it, then they do it. Okay, so uh, let's just check these by set to five thousand. Perfect. Okay. So all we need to do is let this water circulate and see if it flows as it should, which it should. Shall I, you know what, shall I get them to, um, I probably should, I should probably get them to do this. Uh, let's get them to do this, like priority nine. Um, so the water coming back in, so make that insulated and make that insulated and that insulated. Go. It's not horrifically important, but I mean, ideally that, that should be insulated. There we go, and hopefully they'll get this done before the water gets around. That would be nice. Come on, finish off the last bits, boys. Hooray! Right, I think they've just done it in time. Hooray! And there was much rejoicing. Okay, so the water coming back in splits into the two reservoirs. We've got the water being taken out of the two reservoirs. And we are not using the overflow. So that works. Okay. Peachy. Oh my god, this might actually work. The thing is, I need, um, in order to demonstrate this, I need... I need something that will use... Uh, you know what I can do? You know what I can do? Um, if I, over here, put in, like, a bit of liquid... Pipe, like, just to demonstrate this to you. If I put that over there and put, um, put a valve on it. And then let's get a reservoir. Uh, we're on base. And a liquid reservoir, which we'll put there. And finish that off with a little bit of... Okay, and then priority nine, and turn that off, please. Go. Okay, so... That means that I can, I can take water out of this system to kind of test it. All right, sweet. All right, so now what we want to do... Uh, okay, that's gone. Why isn't that circulating anymore? Oh man, I may need to put a liquid bridge in here just to get this to circulate because it thinks it needs to go that way. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay, let's put in a liquid bridge. So plumbing and liquid bridge. Uh, that was the right way around. So there. I mean, you could put it anywhere to be honest. That'll, that'll do. Okay, priority. Come on, priority nine, do it. I need to set my priorities back to normal. And then I just need to sever that, don't I? So, there we go. Right, now get rid of that liquid pipe deconstructor. Okay, so now we've got the water circulating properly and I can extract water. So, what happens if I hook this up to the hot water. This is going to be the big test. So, insulated pipe, boom. Okay, so that starts to bring fresh hot water into the system. Okay, now 
Let's look at these. Which one's fullest? That's uh, four, two. Okay, so this one's the fullest. So that's the one we'll watch. Okay, so we need to see what happens when this becomes full. Because what should happen is that the water starts going around here. Now, uh, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I probably... I, I, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But I, I think I'm only going to need one liquid pipe element sensor now. This is going to become more simple. So if I get plumbing, uh, a liquid pipe element sensor and put it uh, there. Yeah. And then I won't need... Oh, this is going to be so much simpler. Oh, hell yeah. Let's, um, let's go back to liquid view. Let's rip out... We can rip out all of this stuff. In fact, we'll just rip all of this out. Go. Yeah, rip all of that rubbish out. Don't need any of that nonsense. And uh, we don't need any of... So, if the, we're going to say, if there's not water in there, so I will need a not gate. Um, so, let's get rid of that. And how are we going to do this? Yeah, let's do it like that. So, we want... What, let, we, I can let that run, actually. Uh, not gate, not gate. We want a not gate. Flip that around like... Um, actually, that would work fine, wouldn't it? Yep. Automation wire into there. So, if there's no water in that pipe, then this is on. Yes! Oh, no filter selected. Water. Okay. Yes, that is working. So, this is saying there's no water. So, send a, a, a red signal. We switch that using a knock gate to a green signal so that this allows hot water to come into the system. Awesome sauce. Right. Let's deconstruct that and get that rubbish out of the way. Deconstruct that and get that rubbish out of the way. I Okay, so now... Hang on a second. Okay, this is now getting full. This one is not quite full. Okay, this is uh, this is actually going to work slightly better than I even thought. So what's going to happen is now we now we are getting water coming through here. This should intermittently start stopping flow until these are full, and then this overflow is now full. Okay, so now we're always going to have water in here. So this gets shut off. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is that the system then jams up. Oh man, so I've got to get around that. Now, huh. I think, now if I release some water out of here, what should happen, uh, what do I want to do, what do I want to do, I want, um, just turn this on, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, let's just just allow a little bit of water to flow into this reservoir, which just needs to, somebody to come turn it on. Here we go. Okay, so now we're letting some water out of here. That's going to allow this to free up. But, hmm. Yeah, man. That is... We need a buffer on here. Yeah, we need a buffer on here. Because if we detect water on here, we need to shut this off for a while. Because like, as soon as we get water coming through here, we need to shut that off for a while. Okay, so what I've put in is um, a buffer gate before the knock gate. Okay, and I'm going to set this buffer gate to 30 seconds. Now, what that's going to do is... As soon as we detect any water in this overflow loop, it's going to turn off the input for 30 seconds. Or at least that's the idea. So let's have a look. Let's see if that works. So we detect some water. Yeah, and then this will turn green 
for 30 seconds. We change it to a knot so that it turns this off for 30 seconds. That gives time for water to be used up. Now, like in my actual system, I'll probably make this longer than 30 seconds. But see, now we've we've managed to drain some water out of the system, so we're not overflowing anymore. But we're bring, constantly bringing in water. Oh, now we've overflowed. So then we turn off the input until we've drained enough water. Oh my God, that's it, guys. That is it. Oh, yeah. Right, so hang on a second. The That's linked to that. That's fine. Have I set the temperature on that? Yes. Now, the temperature, hang on. The temperature is 57 degrees at the moment. So we should be running this through the cooler, and we are not. And the reason that we're not is because I haven't put the loop going into there. Okay, so let's get the loop going into there. So what do I need to do? I need to take water. Uh, we need insulated pipe. So I need to take the water out of there. And then I'm going to have to bridge it over there. And then we take water from there. And then run it into there. That. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I think I've actually cracked it. Oh my god. If this if this works now, then I've just solved something that I have been trying to fix in my brain for like like well it's over a week now, it's about like ten days. So let's see. Yes. So now the cooler is running. So we're bringing hot water in because we've got enough room. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop taking water out of the system now. So I'm gonna say uh, turn that off. Now what that should do? Okay, so we've overflowed. So we turn that off for thirty seconds. Cool. We're letting a bit more water in. We overflow, so we turn it off. Um, you know, at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this buffer to like um, 120 seconds. Now, bear in mind, in in my system, I'm always going to be draining some of the water out. So this won't be a problem. I mean, I suppose I could set this to like, I don't know, like 100 grams or something, just so that I've got some kind of drain all the time. Go. All right. So let's have a look at this puppy. Oh, my God. It's working. Okay, well it's working-ish. The problem is we've backed up here, which has caused us to back up here. So we're not actually averaging our temperature, which is not like too much of a problem now, but why is why isn't this flowing constant? Oh, it's because we've got some overflow going around. Okay, let's um, let's change my buffer gate to 300 seconds. Oh, apparently 200 is the max I can have. Okay, still works. I've, the thing is, I've, I've introduced too much water into here. The the other thing that I could do would be. Uh, uh, would be to restrict the flow in here by putting a valve on here. Uh, let's see. If I was to put a liquid valve, uh, can I fit the darn thing in? Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, so hang on a second. If I get my pliers, another little refinement, and then put plumbing, a uh, liquid valve. Build that priority nine. 
Yeah, go. Come on, guys, get it built. Right, now I can restrict the flow down to, say, a thousand grams. So I'm not introducing too much water into the system. Okay, that gives me, like, ultimate control now. Okay, that's beautiful. That needs to be priority nine. All right, so we are we are cooling because what's the temperature? We're at like 51 degrees, but that's coming down. We're not introducing any more water. We're going to introduce much less water when we do introduce water. We've got the buffer, so we're going to only introduce water every so often. So we won't get backed up. See, we just had a, an overflow one. Okay, this is flowing properly now. This is working properly now. So we're actually averaging the water that's flowing through here. Yeah, we've got a constant temperature now. And that is constantly coming down now. Awesome. So the cooling system is... Oh my god, that's it. Oh my god, that is actually it. <laughs> Peachy. Okay, so... So that's fine. So yeah, I can restrict how much water I bring into the system so that I, I'm never going to overload the system. I mean, that could be a relatively small amount. Just balanced again what, against whatever I'm taking out of the system. But because I've got that uh, that buffer, 200 seconds um, is what? It's um, about, three and a half, about three and a half minutes. Oh my god, that actually works. Guys, there you go. That's it. And I tell you what, that has turned out to be simpler than I thought it was going to be. Wow. So now I can bring hot water in. Introduce it to the system. It'll automatically be cooled down. And because I'm bringing it in um, in much smaller quantities, because before I was just like flooding the system with hot water, which is kind of crazy. Uh, See, so we're already down to like 46 degrees. Eventually, that will get back down to our 20, 18 to 20 degree level. Okay, so the next step, and I will do this before the next episode. The next step is to duplicate this over here and put in my circulation routes. Oh, man, but like I am. I couldn't be more pleased that I finally freaking figured this out. But boy, that... Um, that took, oh, seriously, my brain almost melted. Guys, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your help, all your comments. Thanks to all my uh, lovely patrons and channel members who were helping me out with this. I will catch you for the next one. I'm going to go and have a rest now. Peace out. <laughs>